Hello, you're welcome to today's family devotional. God bless you as you listen. And um, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Press the like button. And then share our messages to benefit others. Be part of the gospel preaching, part of the evangelism. God bless you. Uh, we really, uh, I really feel... Um, I must express my um, appreciation to every one of you who have been listening to our various messages and uh, I've been off air for some time, not for anything, it's just like going on a retreat. And thank God we are back and expect more of the family devotional from now on. God bless you. Now this morning we want to... Let us pray first. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Daddy. We bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for another time like this. Thank you for sparing our lives to see today. Thank you for our yesteryears, this year, and the years to come. Thank you for all the blessings bestowed upon us. Thank you for your cares. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. We appreciate you for your mercies and favors. Accept our thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, Mm -hmm. Almighty Father, this morning we come before your throne of mercy. Please forgive us our iniquities. Mm -hmm. We want to share your word this morning. Please come and speak to your people yourself Mm -hmm. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Blessed be to your name. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Once more, you are welcome to today's service and uh, to today's family devotional. Uh, the Bible passage we are reading is the book of um, Second, Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 1 to 5. Amen. Now concerning the ministry of the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness, about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago. And your zeal has stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that, as I said, you may be ready, lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren, to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As a matter of generosity and not as a grudging gift. Amen. Amen. We give glory to God for this message, which is shedding light on the ministry. It's a ministry on its own. Giving to the work of God is a ministry on its own. And everybody is supposed to be involved. We all know that there is no organization that can run without money. But money is not the priority of fundraising. It's never the priority of the church of God. Whatever money will come to the church of God will come through voluntary giving. Amen. That is why we have some issues with some approaches that some churches are adopting. That's why. But if giving money to the church of God will be such that the soul, the souls of the people will be driven away from the church of God, then we, the church of God, we must be careful. Any giving that must be given to the church of God has to be as the people purpose in their own hearts. Because today we have so many uh, invented methods or strategies through which churches collect money from people. But what is important to God, and just like Paul 
has given us the good example here is that whatever money must come to the church of God for the work of God must be something that is purposed in our heart. Let me make a difference. For instance, tithing that is so popular in the church is not a voluntary money. It is uh, a compulsory money. It is a legalistic money. It is um, give, it is by force. Why? Because it carries curses with it if you don't give it. And incidentally, we are not, I mean, it's clear that the period of the law has gone and it has gone with tithing. That is why tithing does not qualify under the New Testament dispensation, you know, as a form of giving to God because it is not voluntary, as we have just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 1 to 5, especially verse 5. Any money that is given to the church of God must be voluntary. Um, first fruit giving is not voluntary also. And you can see that, you know, many churches have abused these two. The rest, they are voluntary. It could be offering, they call it love offering. It could be donation, which you, in terms of offering, it is what you purpose in your heart that you give. Then in terms of donations, it is what you purpose in your heart that you give. In terms of um, vows or pledges, that's why the Bible says it's better for you not to pledge than to pledge and you don't fulfill it. It is better that you don't pledge at all. Nobody compels you. If your vows or pledges must come, it has to be voluntary through you. And once you make it, it becomes law for you. Then you pay because it is you are you purposely in your own heart say you will do it. And anything you tell God, you know, is established. So that is why that one, if you have, that's why it's better not to pledge or to vow at all than to vow and not fulfill it. So now giving to the church of God, if I give it to the work of God, give all your substances. It could be money. Money is just that money is the arrowhead. Is the, is the primary thing that we all think of. You can give your time. You can give your money. You can give your prayers. You can give your love. You can visit people. You can give uh, your time to for evangelism. You can give your talent, like the singers in the church, like the instrumentalists in the church. You can give anything that the Lord, if nothing is too much to give to God, and God wants us to give it generously. If it is money you are giving, give it generously. If it is your tight, tight, um, if it is your talents that you are giving, use it generously for the work of God, to the glory of God. So giving is very important. It's an important ministry. The only thing that makes the difference is this. When the church is now the one telling you, you know, you must, you must, you must. It is important. You see, when the Spirit of the Lord is in you, it is the Spirit of the Lord in you that would lay it upon your heart to do what God wants you to do, not man. But when we begin to say that if you don't give, you will die. If you don't give, you will be, this will be hard for you. If you don't give, I mean, you, you won't. Or to the point that we are saying, if you don't give, we don't see evidence of your giving, we won't wed your uh, spinsters or bachelors or what in the church. Or we are now giving envelopes, tight envelopes as an evidence for um for ordination and all that, to show that you are paying money to the church and all that, then it's going legal. So, but if you are giving, you must give voluntarily. And there's nobody that God has not given one thing or the other. Today, you may not have cash on you, but give your dancing offering to the Lord. Give your cheerful heart to the Lord. Give your love. And then, but when you have, whatever you have, it is good. It is, it is, uh, biblically sound that you give to God. You remember, 
Solomon, King Solomon gave a thousand offering. That's, you know, he gave generously. That's the meaning. And God visited him. So if you give generously, God himself knows how to visit you for good. But do not give out of compulsion. Do not give out of... And uh, there's one uh, thing that I'm saying. Don't let money drive you away from the church of God. Because I can see many of our churches now are practically empty. Because people are complaining that churches are demanding money, 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 money. And so they are no longer at peace. No, it is wrong for you to, because of that, leave the, the church of God. No. If God has laid upon your heart to give anything, and you have, please give. But because if you don't have to give today, don't run away from the church. Go there and begin to pray. You see, your presence in the church glorifies God. That the church is filled up with people glorifies God. It shows that we have a heart, a heart of appreciation to God. So if today you don't have cash to give, don't be discouraged. And don't buy into the threats that uh, you are not giving and then you are not getting anything. No. God knows your heart. If you don't have, truly, God knows. If you have, God knows. One thing is be truthful to yourself. And anything you have, give it generously to the work of God. Like I said, it is true that churches cannot run without money. They need money. You know, the, seat, the chair you are sitting upon is made from money. Uh, the cathedral or the church you are sitting is money that built it. Yes, you need it. But if it gets to the point that money will drive you away from the church of God, please don't fall into that temptation. Because God loves, in fact, what God himself, you see, all these monies we are giving is for the church to do the work of God. Apart from blessing others, you know, it is for for creating egalitarians, making sure that the hungry is taken care of, making sure that the work of God, the building and everything, and your pastors also are uh, taking good care of. That's what where the money goes. But let me tell you one thing. God does not require that money directly from you because he's not hungry, he's the owner of everything. He's the owner of the silver with which the money was made or is made or the paper on which it is printed. He's the owner. He doesn't need it. He doesn't even need our sacrifices you know, which we are doing in the Old Testament. But what we need now is that your soul, your soul, your soul, don't let money deprive God of your soul. That is why, whether you have or you don't have, be present in the presence of God. God himself, pray to God to bless you instead of running away. Pray to God to bless you. And when God begins to bless you, even in that little, remember the work of God. You know, donate, pay your offerings, generous offerings. Uh, if you make a vow and God has fulfilled it, if you, if you ask God for something and God helped you and it is fulfilled, fulfill your own vows. Donate generously. But when somebody will say, if you don't give, you know, this is what will happen to you, that's not God's. That's not a good doctrinal teaching. No Bible, because that will scare you away from the church of God. God, honestly speaking, you know that sometimes you make a vow and God has, I mean, blessed you and you find it difficult to pay that money because it is a compulsion. You become guilty. You don't want to come to the church of God. No, 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 no. What you need to do is go back to that God and say, the reason, state the reason you couldn't pay that money now. And put it in your mind that as he wills, you will pay. And be, remember that any slightest opportunity for you to pay that money, you pay it to the church of God. So uh, guilt is not what you need to go and trade in the church. Guilt is not what you go for church to church for. You know, God is interested more in your soul, redeeming your soul, and you preaching the gospel, and you retaining, being your, remaining in the church where you have been taught the true word of God than in your money. Don't worry, God can raise a thousand and one people to bless the church and for the church to really make a headway. 
But don't let you, your soul is so precious. If you are absent from the church, something precious has left the church. Buildings can be built over centuries. Any other thing can be done gradually. But your presence, during this time, you are in, alive. Your presence in the presence of... That's why Paul, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 1 to 15, says, I even decided not to bother anybody. I don't want to be a body on you. That's why, why we are saying that we pastors, we should really be cautious on how we emphasize money in the church of God. Indeed, we are the parents of these people. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. That's what Jesus said to Peter. And then you can now see that we are supposed to take good care of them. So if we are doing something or we are placing a body on them that makes them to run away, it's a, it's a loss to the kingdom of God. In fact, we should, in fact, we should rather accommodate those who are not paying money yet, whom God will enter into their heart later and convince to pay, than to allow them to stray away and then run away from God. That is the thing. Let us give general And to you, my listener, please, if you have run away from your church before because they are demanding for so much money, don't worry. Return to your church. You see, do what God has laid upon your heart. Pay whatever God lays upon your heart so that it will not be that you are giving grudgingly. As verse 5 of that Second Corinthians chapter 9 says, let it not be. That's why Paul says, you can be saving it. I'm now sending somebody in advance. I mean, be saving in advance so that when you come, it won't be as if we are forcing you. God has several ways of blessing his church. Churches do give money to churches. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that to, for the development of even the one that Paul is talking about is writing to another church to support them in the ministry that they are doing in another place, not bothering the people that are in the present church they are building. So please, God will give us wisdom. We, the ministers of God, let us not overemphasize money in such a way that People will run away. Their souls are more precious to God than the money we are demanding for. God will bless you. And let those of you who are still in the church of God never be driven away because of money. You may not have truly. Pray to God to give you money. It is the same God that can make you have money. He says the one that blesses and adds no sorrow to it. And John 10.10 10 says, Christ has come to give us life and give us life in abundance. But to yourself, be true, true in whatever you are doing. God also expects that you give back your appreciation in appreciation of what he did to the people so that other people can be blessed. Just as you are also sharing your testimony of what the Lord has done for you. It's, give, it's, it's, a, it's a form of giving to God the glory. And then people who do not, have, who do not believe in God before, we now know that the God is living and he's blessing people. Therefore, please never run away from the church of God because <clears throat> you don't have money. That money can come at any time. Give your soul, your spirit, your body, your time, your energy, everything. Give to God. God bless you and kindly share this message, you know, widely. And remember to subscribe to our channel.